We are getting a look at Health Canada's proposed regulations for recreational marijuana, this ahead of legalization in July. Haley Wooden with Business in Vancouver is joining us now with more. And Haley, I understand uh, the regulations have uh, some speculating about what this will mean for the industry. Exactly. It's a big file, too. It covers very broadly six categories from security to tracking to licensing. A couple of points I want to highlight that have been points of contention. One relates to packaging. There's going to have to be strict uses of color, graphics, uh, any special characteristics on the packaging of recreational cannabis. It'll also have to have a health warning. Now, this has been a point of debate with industry that wants to be able to promote its cannabis over that of competitors. It does look like it won't be required to have plain packaging, but it does fall short of, say, the open regulations we see for the packaging of alcohol. Another area that opens the door for new possibilities would be allowing different types of cannabis products. So you could have cannabis oils and edibles. And another one that might be interesting to some would be allowing different licenses depending on the end use of a cannabis product. So for example, you could have micro cultivators producing craft cannabis. So very mm. similar to how you see craft brewers in the region. We might eventually, once recreational cannabis is legalized, actually see craft cannabis producers. So there's a lot to cover here. These proposed regulations are by no means final. They are subject to a public consultation period that's open until January 20th. But it does give us a sense of how the federal government is hoping to regulate this new industry. Definitely. And Haley, I understand Loblaw is breathing a big sigh of relief today. They are. The Competition Bureau has dropped one of the investigations that was launched at Loblaws, this is around the company and allegations that it had anti-competitive measures in place. So essentially, claims argued that given Loblaws' dominance in the industry, its recent relatively acquisition of Shoppers Drug Mart three years ago when the investigation was launched, allowed it to put pressure on suppliers who then had to play ball with Loblaws because it was such a big player. Suppliers had claimed that their relationship with Loblaws did affect its dealings with competitors. And of course, the concern here from the Competition Bureau standpoint is this could ultimately end up with consumers frequenting other retailers and having to pay higher costs. Now, the Competition Bureau has found not enough evidence to support any of these claims Loblaws did have some anti-competitive measures in place, but it canceled them in January 2016. So at this point, there's no more investigation on that front. There is still an investigation when it comes to fixed pricing of bread, mm -hmm. but we have no word on where that's going. It's still under review and a fairly recent development, too. All right. Haley Winner with Business in Vancouver. Thank you, Haley. Thank you.